This is a promoter that will start the transcription of the repressor gene. This is the repressor gene that through transcription and translation will produce this repressor protein. Repressor protein turns off transcription when binded to the operator region. The next element is the promoter region. This is where RNA polymerase binds to start transcription. RNA polymerase transcribes mRNA from DNA. The operator region is where the repressor protein binds to. Effector molecule can make a active repressor into inactive by binding to it. Effector molecule binds to the aleosteric side of the repressor protein to make it inactive. The structural gene is the gene of interest that codes for a protein product. In negative inducible regulation, the repressure protein is active without the effector molecule. Active repressure binds to the operator site and prevents transcription from happening. When the effector molecule binds to the aleosteric site of the active repressor, it makes the repressure protein inactive, thus detaching from the operator and allowing RNA polymerase to start transcribing the structural gene. Since this is a negative inducible regulation, the absence of the effector molecule, the repressor protein stays active and binds to the operator site at the DNA, thus preventing RNA polymerase from transcribing the structural gene. In presence of the effector molecule, the effector molecule will bind to the aleosteric site of the repressor protein, making it inactive detaching it from the operator site, thus allowing RNA polymerase to continue and transcribe the structural gene. In my analogy, let's say you're trying to drive to the beach, but there is a gate preventing you from driving. Thus, driving represents transcription and the gate represents the repressor. To lift the gate, a worker has to be there. The gate stays open as long as the worker is there, but closes when the worker isn't. Thus, the worker represents the effector molecule. This is a negative inducible regulation.